Well, here we are again. We must keep meeting like this. Two million. Two million of you have listened to the big interview at least once, and I hope we're well on our way to the next million, starting with Frank McAvenny. Frank's done one or two silly things in his life, but then again, so have I. What I didn't like, given that when I watched him, I always thought he was a footballer of supreme finishing, real intelligence, great movement. I didn't like the fact that his social life had pigeonholed him and that everybody only thought of him as a party boy, whereas in fact, he's a bright football man, very good storyteller, funny. I always like funny. And what we all felt was that he could take us into that incredible season when West Ham, not the West Ham of Bobby Moore or Martin Peters or Harry Redknapp, the West Ham of John Lyle finished higher than that club has ever finished in the top league before, led by Frank McAvenny on the form of his life, during a season when half the games weren't even televised. I remember being very frustrated not to be able to watch his progress down there, but learning about him, learning about Tramp Nightclub and George Graham, learning about how Luton and David Pleat came so close to signing him, learning about the things that went on in London, him asking for a transfer, the team meeting that changed the entire dynamic of the season. That was fun. I like Frank McAvenny, and I like watching him play. With any luck, you'll listen to this, and you come out having enjoyed it, and maybe with at least more of an opinion of him as a top-class striker in England's top division. See you on the other side. The, the big interview starts again mm-hmm. in a hallowed place where we've had great fun with Charlie Nicholas and David Prodden. We've got Frank McIverney today, which is an honour for all of us, a giant honour. Um, super footballer. Should be remembered a lot more for skills and goals and achievements. Before we get on to talking about the obvious thing about this time, yeah. can I give you a test? Go on, yeah. Okay. All right. Do you want me to read out Team A or Team B? Whatever. Okay, I'll read out Team B. Jim Layton, Steve Nicholl, Joe McLaughlin, mm-hmm. Ray Stewart, Ian Redford, Gary Gillespie, Jim Bett, Neil Simpson, George McCluskey and John McDonald. Mm-hmm. Who's the missing player? Probably me, they're under 21s. Correct. Correct. They're under 21s. Who's the opposition? Italy. Probably. Spot on. Now, what I want to do is, before I get you to tell a story... Oh, good at that. I, want to, <laughs> I hoped it was an easy yeah, one, and we, yeah. we didn't rehearse that beforehand. No, no. I want to point out to people that even if they don't know Sergio Battistini, who played about 350 Serie A <laughs> games and won the title with Inter, they'll probably remember Mauro Tassotti, Beppe Bergomi, one of the most famous Inter players of all time, and right throughout the team, there are guys... Franco Baresi. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's heard of Franco Baresi, anybody? <laughs> Just a wee bit, yeah. What was the situation? <laughs> what was the score? Bring us back to that moment. I get brought in, I was at St Mern, and I get brought in as an overage player to the under-21s. It was the quarterfinals, European Championships. And I was fortunate because my manager at St Mern was the manager of the under-21s. And he brought me in, I was a midfield player at the time. I used to play at midfield for St Mern. And we went to... <laughs> A place called Cantonzaro, which I didn't know where it was, but it was miles away. And apparently they took us down there because I wasn't at the first game. I think I don't know what the first game was with Nanitz. I think it was. The, the, this is this is actually the first game. Oh, was that the this first is the, game? This that? is what makes the story even better. Yeah. Well, we we went over there and we we beat them one 0 and, and it was great because John McDonald and George McCluskey were up front, and I was a midfield player with Jim Bett and all that, and I was just. To me, from a Glasgow boy, to be honest with you, going to this place, Canton Zero, they were all chucking things. And it, was, it was just like going to a nightclub in, the, in Glasgow in that time. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, what, it the was punters at London 21 oh, game? Oh, the punters, it was mobbed. It was a Basque country, is it a, is it a Basque country they were saying? It was really... It's down in, it's, it's down it in the down south, in, isn't it? It's uh, fierce, eh? Fierce, it was, it was really fierce. But it was great, and of course, it was a good game, to be honest, with a lot of good players in the Italians. <laughs> People need to remember that, mm-hmm. number one, the, the weird thing, was this is Scotland in the quarterfinals yeah. of, of a major... They've never, I didn't know, they've never won a game in Italy before. And they hadn't, haven't since. No since, no. Yeah. I mean, there's no internet at that time, so no, now we know nothing. Baresi, Bergomi, yeah. as a Tassotti... Well, Baresi went on to become one of the best man markers in world football, oh, if yeah. not the best. Yes. He went over there, and it was great just to... Did you know anything about those guys beforehand, or were they all no, complete... No. No, I didn't. I was, still, I was starting. I was still starting at St Mern, so I didn't really know anything about them. 
when you see you played in midfield that day, as you yeah. did, making Frank McDougall look good, I think, yeah. was, the, yeah, was the role yeah. at St Mirren. You know, for a goal scorer, mm-hmm. notorious for brilliant finishing, yeah. called by Tony TC as yeah. the best finisher he's played with, yeah. best player he's played with. Not what were you doing in midfield, but how did you play in midfield? What position did you... Um, when I started playing, I was so thinny. I was like a swan vest, I had red hair. I was, I had, I had, uh, I was like, someone called me a, a matchstick. <laughs> I, was, I was so thin. And uh, they put me in, they, they put me into the gym, but I was rapidly putting weight on, and because of my pace, they didn't want to. And I just always played midfield. I didn't play football when I was a boy. I never played football. I played football in primary school. Is this in Milton? In Milton for my, my team. I played football in the primary and we won a trophy, won two trophies and that was that was only one one and only year that they'd won anything. And I was a really small kid and I got sent off again in another game and my dad was angry with me and said you shouldn't get, you know, it was embarrassing but I was getting crap kicked at me so I retaliated which I shouldn't have. And I didn't play football and I used to go and watch Celtic every weekend and in the days... Amateurs, juniors, professionals, all played Saturdays. Three o'clock. So I never played football. I never, I never played football. I used to play on a Sunday down at it's a school in Milton when I grew up. It's called Deaf and Dumb School. And mm-hmm. It was for the kids and all that. And we used to all climb over the fence on a Sunday because there was nobody there. And we used to play, but it was gravel. So I suppose that's where I got my touch. Because you're playing with all the older boys and, and the gravel wasn't exactly flat in the days. So it's bouncing all over the place. And if you didn't control the ball, you were getting hurt. Or he's, he's older boys. You and I are a similar yeah. age, so there's a lot of people listening to us who genuinely don't know what you're talking uh, about. So when you're talking about get hurt, yeah. you're talking about losing half a oh, leg. Oh, these boys didn't hold back. You know, they, they really didn't. They used to come right through you. And toughened me up, even though I was so thin. Before I started playing for St Man, I went and signed for Johnson Borough, which is a junior, junior. A junior club. Mm. And uh, and it was great. It really, it really was great because I was sort of sitting in a hole that was my point, and the big striker up front used to just. Could you call it a ten in, in the way yeah. that people talk about it? Number so that, ten, I was number ten. Well, I was. So seeing this team that we talked I about, was a, I was a midfield player, but I really took it upon myself to play the number ten position. I was more of an attacking player. I was when I tackled somebody, it was a foul. You know, I was not a good tackler. I was, <laughs> I was terrible. Probably that's when I realised I was a striker because strikers can't tackle. You know, and they shouldn't be back in the box or anywhere near the box. So that was, I was more an attacking player at Johnson Borough when I signed for Johnson Borough. To get to Johnson Borough, the Celtic game got cancelled one week and I was walking through town and some of my mates were there for the Malton I used to play on a Sunday with. And they said, come and have a game. I didn't want to play. And the manager says, look, I was 19. The manager says, look, we're short of players. Come and have a game. I'll get a couple of beers. Well, you know, in the days I was unemployed and I thought that would do it for me. So I went and there was five scouts watching the kid that I was playing against. And that's <laughs> so I don't know what happened to that boy, but I had not a bad game. That's how you got spotted? That's how I got spotted, yeah. So, so, and did they say to you, right, I tell you what, our guys in midfield or where do you want to play? How did they? They, they said to me, look, there were three professional clubs want me to go on trial and two junior clubs want me to sign. And Johnson Borough offered me 500 quid to sign. And I thought, that's strange. And so I made it cash. <laughs> <laughs> just in case they wanted it back, you know, for a, for a check cash. So when you said that stage, you thought, how could it be that? Yeah, I'm... I didn't think I was going to play football. I thought, I thought, just take the cash and and get out of there and, and see how long it lasts. And I, I went, I went and trial with Patrick Thistle. Well, I was at Johnson, but I was only at Johnson for a year, but a couple of trials. Thistle was one of them. Barry all told me I wasn't good enough. <laughs> But you can imagine, I've never let him forget that. I'll yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry said to me, you're not good enough, just your your ability, because he's a bit harsh, was Barry, he says, you're not going to make it by junior. And I knew I was better than his teams. It was cruel because he put me on his sub. As a trialist, you don't do that. And he took me off of money games, and I'm thinking, it's not right. You know, I managed to, you're just new to the team, you should learn trial, you should get a trial, you should start with the team. You know, you shouldn't do it. Better. So how do you resolve, how did you... If you can go back, how did you resolve that in your head? Because presumably as a Celtic fan, as, as Barty old means something pretty big to you. As soon as he came into the bath, I was, he took me off and I was in the bath. And he came in and he started talking to me and he said, just, you, you need to stay junior. And as soon as he said that, I just put my head under the water while he was talking. And that was a moment that I thought, I'm going to make it because that was a defining moment for me because I thought, it, I was better than his team. If somebody pushes you down... Yeah, you I, was, I was better than his team and I knew I was better than his team. His team were terrible. So I thought, yeah, that's me, I'm going to make it. Went and trial with St Man, done two trial games with them. Who, who was in charge then, Ricky? No. No, no it was Jim, Jim Clooney. Oh, Jim Clooney, oh, I remember Jim, Jim Clooney. 
So I get two trial games, and then I played a, a Renfrewshire Cup game for them in a trial as a trialist, mm. and I get sent off against Morton. <laughs> so the boy in midfield just one of the. At least it was an unimportant game. Yeah, it was, it was only Morton, you know. It was an important game. <laughs> so I get in a tussle with them, and the twos get sent off, and I thought I'd blown it. And the manager said to me, "I knew you had the ability, but I didn't know you had the heart." So I want to offer you a contract. So. Strange, strange ways the world works, but um, that was why I get signed. You, you don't mean to go too off on a uh-huh. tangent, but you rung a bell for me last week. Uh-huh. Ray Parler came out. Oh, yeah. They were fantastic. <laughs> and he was telling the story of Colo Turi having a trial at Arsenal. Yes. Trial, unknown. Yeah. Yaya Turi's been trialled and sent back home. <laughs> and Ray described it as, it was a defence against attack <laughs> exercise. Where it was five attackers and three defenders. Mm-hmm. Colo's in the centre of the three defenders. as a trialist <laughs> as well. The ball's coming in, the ball reaches Dennis Bergkamp. Colo's like... There's the ball, there's a the man. Key yeah, up in the air, call to it, straight to the back. Horse of like, no, 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 Cola, no, 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 Cola. And everybody's like, no, Cola, that's, that's. All right, fine, okay, fine, 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 fine. We'll start the exercise again. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's giving all the signs he's understood. The ball arrives at Terry Henry, calls like, straight to the back of Terry Henry, ball and Terry Henry up in the air. Horse is like, no, no, Cola, it's, it's not like this. No, thank no, look. I'll receive the ball. So you know what's coming down. I'll take the ball. I'll show you what we can do. Calls it. Super boss. Okay. Super uh, what? Uh, okay. Did you come forward? Uh, Bollocks! Took him right up. Oh, let them know what's coming. Arson up in the air like that. And the boys are like, oh, Colo. And Ray said he got back to the dressing room with Colo. Trial is just sitting there going, oh, merde. Oh, merde. I've screwed the whole thing up in fridge. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. And Ray's like, ugh. Oh. Decent belly goes, oh. look. He kind of continue this, but I'll go and speak to the boss, and I'm sure he... And Arson's sitting there, and he's... Oh, you bastard, holding his, <laughs> holding his ankle and all that. And he's like, boss, boss, he didn't fully understand it. I like his character. <laughs> we'll sign him. <laughs> Same as right. you, like... Right. Arson, the, the manager, likes right. people like that. A boy, Aye. put somebody up there. Well, I take tell him. you what he could do with it now, because his team's not doing that at the moment. They're too nice and nice, aren't they? But, like, Samira yeah. must have seen your football. Yeah, well, well, that's what he said It to wasn't me. on that alone, eh? That, well, that's what he said to me, and... And two days later, he gets sacked. He said, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, "That was good." <laughs> so that was a good saying. I thought, but I jumped never thank him for that. And the manager took over. The physio took over, and it was the physio really. It was Ricky McFarlane. Ricky, really, yeah, that's, that's really he, he really looked after me. He sent me to exercise in the gym and all that. And, but I was bogging up too quick, and I was scoring a lot of goals from midfield. At the, that time, I got in the team. He, he had to put me in. He says I wasn't ready, and then he put me in against Airdrie. And uh, there were so many players injured. And we had a great team at the time. We had players like Billy Stark, Lex Richardson, Naba Crombie. I mean, it was great boys. Super great boys. 20 foot past it. It was great, some great yeah. players. And he put me in against the Airdrie and I scored two for midfield. And the rest they say is history, but it was it was great because he kept me in. But as you say about Frank McDougall, he's a, he's a great pal of mine. But I used to get Manny in the match, and it was it bought me this, the story. Manny in the match, Frank McIverney. And, and the headlines were, Frank McDougall, he'd do nothing and scored one goal. And the headlines, he got a headline, and I thought, bollocks to that. I said, I need to get a headlines. I said to the manager, I said, I want to play up front. And he went, no, no, you're, you're a great midfield player. I said, no, I want to play up front. I said, she's getting all the headlines. <laughs> and at that time, I just wanted to go and enjoy myself and, and have fun. And I thought, the more headlines I get, the more fun I'll have. Frank was a super finisher, though, wasn't he? Oh, he what, what did he have? Explain to me. He best only supports finish, football. Best finisher I've ever ever been with. Honestly. Seriously. Oh, and ability. He had so much ability. He was incredible. Ability. So when, when he comes to Petrodi, yeah. it's an era when Alex Ferguson's oh, moved on. He phoned me up. Some of our great players have moved on, and he just he phoned, ripped, he he was a heart. Heart. He phoned me up, and he says, uh, "When he was playing at Aberdeen, when I played him, he used to stay over and all that, and we were good pals." He said, "He phoned me up, and he says." I'm gutted. He scored four against. I think it was four against Rangers and three against Celtic in one week, or vice versa. I, I do. I, please, you raised that. And he says, uh, and he says, and I says, oh, you must be pleased. And he went, no, I'm gutted. I says, how? He says, I only got eight chances in the two games, <laughs> and I missed a sitter. <laughs> so that's it. He got eight chances and missed a sitter, and he's annoyed about it. So that would make the goal. See, that fascinates me. People uh-huh. who can play like that. There's so yeah. many different types of football. Yeah. And oh, look, was, we don't spend enough time in looking at why. It was actually quite, it was quite over 20 years, 30 years, it was quite electric, he could put a pace on. But you know, ask him to run any further than that, it was that. Uh, no, he didn't like it's it. It's something that he but didn't... It's, it's some, but it was muscly, he could hold the ball. I always thought it was, it was a great was foil for me. I mean, I played like a, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. a great foil for me. I only got to play up in my last year, but it was a great, great foil for me. 
you, you did enough, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at my phone now, not because I'm rude. Yeah. But because I message from a pal, David Pleat. <laughs> who I've been pals with forever. <laughs> and he says he says this to me. Yeah. Spirited away from the Bedford Arms Hotel yes. Woburn. Yes. Now, you're a West Ham legend. Let's not muck right, about okay. the fact that you I went you, down the same for Luton. You're one of the all time greats yeah. of West Ham. I but went you could have been playing for Luton. Luton. If it wasn't for the chairman, I probably would have been. This is David Evans, the yeah. big Tory. Because David played... David says he's the one that spotted you. Well, he was on the phone at the moment of time. Yeah. He was on the phone. You're not supposed to, but, you oh, know, whatever. on the phone. He was, he was a good lad. David he, was a great lad. He can't be done for and it now. No, and he was, he was on the phone. He, he is to, a great lad. He's, to, he's, a, great he's a great football man. He's a great football guy. And he used to speak to my parents and all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was good. It was good in that way. And I thought, yeah, I'm going to Luton. They were doing all right. Um, they were top division. They watched the Premier League now. They were there. My agent went down with me, and there was about four lawyers in all that face at Burn, and I'd never seen all this. It was only, I can't remember what it was, 350 grand or something, but, something like that. But for what them, money, it's, then, it's big. Money. Yeah. So Luton had paid all the flights down, and I went in, it was the manager, the chairman, the lawyer, and somebody else. There was four plus me and my agent, six of us. And we're all having a laugh talking to David, and the chairman walked in, I swear to God, he walked in, he slapped me in the back of the head, and he says, Welcome to Luton, Macca. And I thought, who the, f who the f are you? And I looked at my agent, and it, it was one of them, I didn't know why to shake his hand or put the head in him. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said to him, right away, I took an instant dislike to him. Yeah. And I thought, man. And then we walked out, and Alec Muller, the manager, said to me, you know what saying? I said, no. And he says, West Ham, I want to speak to you. And I said, when did that happen? He wasn't going to tell me if I'd signed for looking at West Ham were in for me. He wasn't going to give me the option. I'm not defending Alec in this, but no. I, I've heard over my career thousands of stories about clubs treating players like dirt Aye. and not telling them things yeah. that... Yeah. That, that was a make-or-break moment in your yeah. life. Of course it was. I mean, I mean, no disrespect, David, but if it wasn't... If he told me West Ham or Luton, I was going to West Ham. Yeah. You know, even a Scotsman knows... I mean, I kept winding up saying West Ham won the World Cup, you know. It was, that's all they keep on about. But everyone knew the players like Booking and... Oh, aye. Bobby Moore and, and Bonds, even Bonds, I heard a bit. Brilliant just, atmosphere. The oh, Eastern of London yeah. would yeah. remind you a little about Scotland. I get lost, so, lost, 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 lost when I'm doing because I was looking for West Ham and, and West Ham's an East Ham. <laughs> so it was always a good excuse for me. I said, oh, I forgot. And like, so the big Tory idiot ruins Flat his own and, deal. He ruined it, yeah. So and Alec I, tells you about West Ham, but there's no mobile phones in no those phone, days. No mobile phones. So you can't phone them up and say, right, what I kept saying to the chairman after that, I was just, I was just being a bit picky and he's going, we're going to give you this. And I'm saying, look, and my agent's not getting an answer from him, top money. And uh, I says, look, just cut through all the bullshit. I says, what did I get my wages? And he's going, well, bonuses. I said, no, interesting bonuses. What am I getting? You know, he just wouldn't tell me anything. So that plus the slap. I wasn't going to sign anyway, so how we get in touch with John Lyle? I don't know. I like my life. I must have had a number. John and Eddie Bailey was the, the assistant. Mm -hmm. And I met them, I don't know. And because, because Luton had paid for all the flights, we couldn't tell Luton we were going to speak to West Ham because they would have wanted the money back. And I knew the directors at St Martin didn't have it. So I'm saying, how do we do this? So we got, we got a car. And me and my agent jumped in the car. And I met John at Toddington service station on the M1. I've heard of it. We went through this park in the middle of the night. It was about two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> this taxi <laughs> took us. And, uh, this is proper football. It was, and it, it was, there was only me... My agent, Eddie Bailey, John Lyle, and a cleaner <laughs> <laughs> in a Toddington service station. And they were all talking football. And after a half an hour, I went and spoke to the cleaner. <laughs> you know, women, I'm, I always speak to us. I can't be bothered with it. Yes. it was, the money wasn't great. I mean, it was only offered me 350 quid a week or something. And I'm thinking, five grand signing around for you. And I was like, you know, and I was so tired. And I just thought, look, tell them I went 15. And I, know, and I got 10. But I mean, it was nothing, and plus I got I got a fifteen because I get five relocation or something, which was great. But for a boy <clears throat> coming from Milton, yeah. who hasn't thought he's going to make it yes, as a footballer, yes. the figures are important. Yeah, everybody, everybody in this room, everybody listening to this, yeah. would do the same as you. You try yeah. to well, make the best two, of it. I was on two fifty at St Mun, and I thought hundred pounds not a lot of money to get down to London, but you've got to believe in yourself. But how, Once I got to that stage, Graham. I believed in monobility. But how quickly did you realise... Five, five seasons at St Murn. Compared to the money, how quickly did you realise that that night you'd met not just a man uh, who would change your life, life but, uh, but the club. a special man as well, eh? I, I, yeah. I, I believe from what... Very, I, told, I told you, yeah. Tony told me a lot about him. Yeah. Matt Lorenzo told me a lot about him. He's incredible. So John Lyle was a pretty special, special man. Very, very special. T tell us why. He just took over my life, really. He knew everything. See, I've got a pension now that I didn't know I had. John Lyle set it off me. 
I oh. didn't know about it. <laughs> that's <laughs> anyway, anyway, that's special. Uh, yeah, I didn't know. I was getting money to get my wages and didn't know what it was for. And, yeah. And it was uh, John's. He's uh, such a nice guy. He was like my dad, really. He looked yeah. after me. And he always, every time my mates came down or my family, he knew every one of them. Hmm. You know, and there's special people that do that. I, See, I, I can't remember anybody's name. You know, and, and John was he, tremendous he, and he knew everyone. He was born and bred yeah. in West Ham Territory, in Essex, yeah. Essex, but his parents were both Scottish. Yeah, yeah. Loved his fishing up here, didn't he? Loved he his loved salmon, it, he says he loved, he loved the Scotsman, he says. And do you think that there was something in his done, roots that he'd done, you... He'd done a thing, oh yeah, it was great. Apparently Fergie, Fergie recommended me. So, okay. which which was great because I used to go to Old Trafford and, and score against them and I loved that, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what you get for recommending me, not buy me. <laughs> but it was, yeah. <laughs> I, I, John Lee was just, it was one of the nicest, probably the nicest guy. Him and Tommy Burns, you know. Well, I understand the comparison. I, I mean, him and Tommy Burns were two of the nicest people. By, by the way, he was different class to me. But as, as in gentlemen, Tommy Burns and John Lee were I was head and shoulders above everyone else. But there's still a theme for all that. I knew that John had been very important to you but there's still yeah. a theme for anybody I've ever talked to uh-huh. worked with him or played for him uh-huh. <coughs> also you, you couldn't mess with him he was, oh, he was no, quite no. A... my mates came down I played for Scotland and my mates came down and we got on a booze and I couldn't make training on Monday <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and one thing led to I was playing I played for Scotland on the, the Wednesday and played for West Ham on Saturday and on the Monday and my mates was, we, we got on it on the Sunday and, and I couldn't make training and normally when you're ill you phone in and get one of the coaches or, or Rob Jenkins who Rob was brilliant Rob was a physio but he was old and you could give him a cup, bottle of whiskey or something and he would say you were in the Sunday and all that kind of stuff so <laughs> John would go was he in yesterday yeah, he's done yeah, his day he's done his day nice one kind of stuff. so it was one of the old school so normally you phone up and you get one of them and this morning I had bodies lying all over my flat I'd have a flat in Brentwood and I, I thought Shh, I can't go in <laughs> And I phoned and I hoped to get one of Ronnie Boyce or something. And John answered. I put his voice on. Oh, I'm not well, John. <laughs> we've, we've got it today, eh? And he went, oh, he does, he does sound well, son. And, all that, you know? <laughs> and he says, there's only one problem. You've got the ITV and BBC and STV cameras. There's three big lorries in the car park. Partly you set up interviews. And I'm thinking, oh, shit. I said, oh, John, I, I can't deal with it, John. Can, can you deal with him? No problem, son, he says. I, I went by bed. Half hour later, ding, 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 ding. He said the lorry's up to my dress. <laughs> <laughs> he gave him a mad dress. I'm sweeping, getting everyone in the room. <laughs> that was John Lyle. That's a nice subtle message, isn't it? That was him, yeah. It was brilliant. He was... But, you know that I don't know yeah. you. I only knew Charlie Nicholas a little bit when he yeah. sat in the same seat as you, yeah. doing the big interview. And I asked him only what I was curious about. Yeah. I said to him, What's it like going down to London at that age? And, and you know, Charlie had a reputation yeah. that he was king of the nightclub, champagne yeah. Charlie. That wasn't what I was asking. And he mm-hmm. said that he was lonely. Yeah. He had to call his sister to come yeah. down and just yeah. be with him. Yeah. London was almost too much for a Mary Hill boy yeah. at that stage. Yeah. Now, that's a long time ago and it changed. But at that stage, it was tough. Was there a stage for you? Well, Were I'm you anything like that? I thought it was close to phone Charlie. <laughs> I, went down there. I went down there. The first time I went down to West Ham, it was, I came back up after a week and took a girl back down with me. People couldn't understand me and nobody wanted to talk to me. I was already in the club, in the football club, because you're in a, amongst the boys in the changing room and yeah, all that. But football part of it. didn't pattern. really, un- I was very, very strong class we do not send it. She genuinely mean that people yeah. weren't picking you up and they'd say in your community or... Ray Stewart said that every time I was shouting for a ball, people thought I wanted to fight them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have to adapt and and, yeah. uh, and and it was one of them, but I, I come up and took a girl down and I says, well, get a house, put it in two names in case it doesn't work mm. sort of a thing, you know, because it wasn't as if I was going to marry the girl, it was just, I, I just had to be, have somebody with me. Mm. London's a big, lonely place. If it, you it'll chew you up if you're, if yeah, you're not ready for it. Yeah. As I get used to it, and the boys started going out with the boys and all mm. that, and I actually asked John for a transfer. I actually asked John to, to leave. I says after about four months or something, I was scoring goals and all that. And I says John, I'm not enjoying this. You know, it's. I'm surprised. And he says, he says, look, he says, let's see what we can do. Just give it another couple of months. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, there was a there was a night out arranged. I don't know if John told the boys to arrange a night out. And, and we all went in, and that's when I got introduced to string fellas and all that. And that was the night out. life changed. <laughs> so, and I was um, thanking John Lyle, but it was actually, yeah. it was actually Peter in his club. Uh, no, Peter was brought. Well, Peter didn't want footballers in his club when I went in. I changed it. Peter done it. He done an interview for me. Not for me, but somebody's doing an interview on me. And Peter says we didn't want footballers because we were arrogant, ignorant people. Hmm. 
he says, and Frank changed all that, because I'm nice to everyone, you know, when you go in a club, it doesn't matter how drunk you are, go to Benet, I'm nice to the doorman, mm. the girls behind the bar, you know, totally agree with you. doesn't matter, I love that. you know, everyone to say, everyone's the same, so I got, he says, and Peter says, you know, it was different, so, yeah, you know. It's, it's hard to believe that mm-hmm. that was the medicine, that yeah. the night out, the, okay, oh, the, bonding the, the, the is... The club, I loved it, I loved the club, I loved everything about West Ham, I just, I was so lonely, I yeah. loved it, and it, it was hard, you know, and I, it actually gave me, by the time Christmas came, I had three rises, Surely. I got three pay rises, before, we started in... That's pretty extraordinary. We started in July, of pre-season, and... Um, by December, I'd, I think it may have been four rises actually. It was it just, it just bang, kept <coughs> me. This is because your goals have lifted yeah, goals everybody in. Well, John bought me, John <coughs> bought me to play in, in the number 10 position. Right. The St. Mirren position. Yeah, it, well, it was one I created myself at St. Mirren. St. Mirren, I was just a part of midfield four. Right. Jimmy Bone was up front with Frank oh, Diggle. Yeah. And I got part of midfield, but it was two of us. It was Billy Stark and myself. Who were the wide players in midfield and Billy could pass, Billy could and, see and space. Billy could score he goals could get as into well. space yeah, as well. He was he used clever. To so yeah. myself and Billy used to be fighting for top goal scorers at one. So it was good it was good. But when I went down there, John actually wanted me to play in behind Paul Goddard and Tony Cotty. Ah, so it was Tony and Paul. Yeah, it was Tony and Paul. I'd always imagined it was you and Tony. No, no it was Tony and okay. Paul. And uh, so everything was great and to be honest it never worked. Pre season we never won a game. It was horrible. It was, it was we get battered with Orient. Oh, that's at, um, that's not so good. At Brisbane, at Brisbane, Brisbane Road. So we get battered with them, and uh, one of the supporters came into changing them. <laughs> Tony had her, Tony had her, like, oh, tattoos and all that, hammers and ICF and all that, all and, and he's shouting, "You're crap, you're crap!" And he's great with everyone. Sure. And I thought it's one of the directors or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they're getting a bit. And uh, and John was just <laughs> John was just standing there and he was shouting, "Born!" And he, he walked out. And then John says, don't they see anything else to our lads? And, and it was a wee bit of kick up the backside. Yeah. And then the first game was against uh, uh, Birmingham. Ho- home or away? Away. away. And I uh, can't remember if it could be one hour, it's one each. I think it may have been one each. Paul Goddard got injured after about 70 minutes. The hand injured. of fate takes yeah. a... So, again, the same as how I started football, just in the right place at the right time. And John put me up front on a Tuesday. He put me up front for the last 20 minutes. Put me up front on the Tuesday against QPR with Tony. Right. That was it. I hate to be rude, particularly with a generous, kind yeah. man. I'm going to cheat again. I've got it. We've got quite a lot of fans at the big interview, and one of them's by the name of Russell Brand. <laughs> so Russell's been a tremendous supporter. He's yeah. a nice man. Right. Loves his football too, which yes. is great for us. So I said to him, listen, Russell, it's your club. Yeah. Frank's, we'll come back to Frank's <laughs> and idol of yours. Any questions? So as soon as you mentioned the no, Tuesday game, he said... There's a few of them. He said, I'd like to see... It's amazing to be listening to Frank. I'd like to know about the first game he played at Upton <laughs> Park where his opening tackle uh, sent somebody, I think a QPR player, into the chicken room. Al McDonald. Big Al McDonald. Not <laughs> Al McDonald. He's alive now. He's dead now, isn't he? Aye. Big Irishman. Aye. He was bat on Tony. And uh, we were both different sides and Big Alan kept going through. And I'm saying, Tony, come over here. And uh, this is my first game on... <laughs> How do you make a name for yourself? Because you know, all these greats at West Ham, you know, yeah. and through the years, Devin was there. Devin was the best player. I'm going to ask about him. Yeah. An idol of mine. Oh, but idol. Um, you're thinking Brooke and Bobby Moore. Yep. The, the amount of people that's graced it, Sir Jeff Austin and Martin. And I said, Tony Covey, and Tony's going, no, he's all right. And so I went over, and the big Irish, I can't remember what he said to me, and I told him where to go. <laughs> and, and the ball came, and I thought, couldn't, there was a chicken run there. The chicken run was Maybe there. we should explain uh, to, to uh, newer listeners. Uh, it was like a jungle at Celtic Park. It was the same terrace, and it was so close to the pitch. That was a proper, proper supporters. They were the, the nutcases, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and the ball, the ball came at McDonald, and I went for it. And just, uh, he, he seen me coming towards him. He took his eye off the ball because it came off him, and it just came off him enough that it went away from him and I thought got him and it just as he's touched it <laughs> I've smashed him and, but he's landed right off the park and he's been right into the chicken run <laughs> he's really and everyone's given it all right <laughs> <laughs> big McDonald's come out and his nose is all bust <laughs> and I could stop laughing you know I was trying to give my hand out and I just everyone's just punching him and they're all shoving him pulling his hair and punching him <laughs> 
Do you know, listen, I, I'm going to put myself hilarious. in the firing line here because we'll be slaughtered for this. I know, I I'll know. be slaughtered for laughing at I it. Know, and today, it we'd be arrested for talking about uh, it. You know, all the partners would be arrested for doing it. This is what football's about. This is what it's meant to be. I was on TV with Russell and he said, so you're accepting that you're a hooligan. It was just good fun. It was. I didn't mean to put him right in it's a chicken run, but it was. he gets slapped and everything. He's gets Once he was in there, it was funny. Oh, yeah, it was funny. Listen, I bet he could take it. Oh, he's a big old lamb. I bet you could take it. it. There'll be one of two of them walked out the chicken room with bruises and all. I'm I'm willing to bet you not. He's a big, he's a big boy, and he was there. and he, he, he left a few studs in the back of my leg as well, so he was it was good. But that was but I've cheated, game. so you're, you're back in your second game. Yeah, that was my that was the second my first game up front. I scored two, we beat him three one, and uh, that night changed changed it for me for mm. West Ham. All of a sudden, there was no way Paul Coddard was getting back up front. If he got back up front, it would have been for Tony because I was scoring goals and Tony hadn't started his run yet. TC and and I, I tried to get him involved. TC is a an out and out goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he goes through and go, he's no chance of passing. He would say this himself. Yeah, of course, eh? yeah. He knows that. I'll go through and go. The keeper comes out, I'll get you, Tony. It doesn't bother me. The goals were never never about me. It was about winning for me. And Tony knows that I'm more... A, but I suppose it was because I played in midfield for a lot of years, whereas Tony's just... He's got one thought and one thought only. Some people are born like yeah, that. Yeah, Lenny has the same. It's Lenny not Kirk, greed. You know, it's not greed. It's just like Lenny in you. It's Alan McCoy. You know, people are they're just yeah. don't want to pass it. You're joking. So, so it's great. You know, it's, it's it was all good fun. But Tony got to know after about four games. Is it training where the clip comes? Yeah, well, but in Scotland you train. Everyone trains together. I went down to West Ham and I couldn't believe first day of pre-season. We got the ball out, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and I'm thinking. I thought John Lair was taking the mickey out of me, you know, because <laughs> in Scotland you don't see a ball for about three weeks. No. You just run. Obviously it's all changed now, but I couldn't believe it when they're down there and John's going, so my way, I'm saying, I was waiting, remember, I don't know the young, youngsters will not remember, it used to be a programme called Jeremy Beadle. He used to come out to Woodwork and hide and it was, it was basically candid camera sort of a thing. More or less. And, uh, and I thought he was going to be appearing somewhere because we, that's <laughs> a ball first day of pre-season doesn't happen. Let, let's explain John, that. Let's John, explain that because that's important. That. In well, other words, you do been Scotland, running, 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 running. Run, you do doggies, you do up the hills, down the hills. It's just round. Try no ball four, five four, no, I don't see a ball. week, ten days? No, ten days maybe, yeah. To your first game probably. Maybe a couple of days before your first pre-season game. And you, you won, they wonder why we don't produce both yes, anymore and, now, eh? And down at West Ham and I was looking at John first morning. We're just passing it 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards. And John said, what's Martin? I says, I don't see a ball in Scotland. And, he, and John says, this is the tools of your trade. Yeah. He says, why you know what I work them? So he says, don't worry, you're running in the afternoon. <laughs> but that was great. Can I be a partner the ball? Because anybody who watched you knows that yeah. the ball and you were friends. Yes, yes. Technically very good, yeah. your control yeah. was good, your finish is very yeah. good. How comfortable did you feel in that first session? How easy was it to say, oh, well, look, you know what? I've you, got the level you don't, or, or, You don't realise, I was, I was comfortable going into the West Ham team. The, the, to be fair, the boys made me feel great. But this, I I'm talking about really... the ball and technique oh, and me, I the was training. Right. The first team, first day's training, you don't realise because you're off for weeks and I was partying in the days and and you don't realise when you're passing that 10, 20 yards in the first day you, you, you're you off a wee bit so it was great that we get the ball first day to pre-season because by the time the games came you yep. know we were all focused and we, but our touch was there we just didn't get it right on the pitch at the beginning of our career at West Ham but our touch and my touch was great I mean it's, it's always been that's one thing it's never left me my touch, you know. Natural, because yeah. you, you didn't play for... Didn't you've play. just told me you didn't, didn't play for it was just, six, seven years. I was just learning how to control the ball in the pitches, but, the bad so pitches. It, it was there yeah. innately? Did you did you inherit it from your no, dad? No, no, I don't know. Where is it? You my don't know where it comes t- from? My dad would tell me. My dad always told me I was, he was great, but no, <laughs> he never played. <laughs> yeah, he used to say he was great, but he never... He couldn't play because he was running a family. A lot of nonsense. My dad was terrible. I don't know where it came from, to be honest with you. I think, you know, there's a lot of boys, I suppose everyone here would would be the same, you know, probably grew up with players round about them, better players than, there was players growing up that who were better than me, but they never made it, and I don't know why, maybe because they were good on the ball, a little dribbly, but they didn't know how to be part of a team or something, I don't know, there's a lot of coaches look for things, and, and I was just in the right place, at the right time, and, and I... I don't even think too much about it because if I was to think about it, it would be frightening, you know. Paul's got injured. You scored twice. Yes, His yes. QPR, <clears throat> we're off. But as you got off and running, mm-hmm. as you, OK, you're out, you're, and if you've said in, in the future you're going to ask for a transfer, not that yeah, long yeah, from yeah, now because yeah. it's a bit lonely and all that stuff. But you go discovering your teammates. 
Uh-huh. And people will remember that Phil Parks was a goalkeeper. He was yes. very, very good. Yes. People probably won't remember that the only guy I signed that summer with you is wee Mark Ward. <laughs> what Wardy? Who was a character. Yeah. Perhaps we'll come back to him in another yeah. interview. Yes. Super character. Yeah. A good player I remember at Everton. I, I don't know why I remember at Everton. I don't know but... why everyone, even when I went to Celtic, you know, people buy wingers when I go somewhere and I'm thinking, I could jump, I could jump very the good. The timing was good, eh? The timing was great, but yeah. I didn't, I always thought, you know, buy a winger, that's for big so centre forward. Do you think John bought Mark to compliment Aye, you? Of course he did, yeah. Of course he did. Yeah, definitely. It was a, it's just a know. shame the two of you didn't get on, eh? <laughs> Who mean Wardy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally opposite characters. Yeah. Or... Oh no, bro, Wardy was great. Wardy's different class. He was my roommate, wasn't he? He was yeah. my roommate. Oh, it's nuts. Mischievous? He, yes, very. I, he tells stories in a podcast, but what have you done to him? I mean, Alvin and Gailey and all that. I, can't, I wouldn't repeat it. But the, the thing I was going to go through one or two of the characters, and, and I think uh-huh. the two. The whole team was characters. I mean, you go right through that team. I can go right through that team, and, and there's not one that wasn't. Alan Dickens maybe was the quietest man Quite of all. Yeah, Big Alvin all. I've met through talks, but Alvin's brilliant. Super character. You know Confident. Reg, you know Reg, you know Gailey. So. Reg is, well, Reg is Tony Gale, <laughs> yeah, yeah. who is... He's still the same. Now, he done... Laugh a minute, I went, take the piss. I went, I went, this is how close we are. We went to Tony Collette, was getting married in October there. And in Dubai, and I went to Dubai. So I went away to Dubai with Gailey, who was doing his best man speech and all that. It was brilliant. Gailey was brilliant. You know what Gailey's like. And he stood up and he says, there was 50 people there, and he says very close friends and family and all that and all here. He says, but the six of Tony's closest pals couldn't make it. He says, but they've sent a message and Tony's looking and the DJ put on, hi, ho. (laughs) (laughs) He absolutely absolutely killed him. And I thought that was worth paying the money to go and see. Because he just, if if Gailey's done, if Gailey's done Tony Cotty and I've got to do it, I told you, I I got (sighs) to know him in London, we went to Kiev with all the media trip, it was Arsenal against Daniel Kiev. We had a right good time. Uh-huh. We've landed there, we've gone out to eat, we've gone to a casino, mm-hmm. I've won decent dosh. Yeah. Sit the lads, we'll all go on now. Yeah. And we have the kind of night you can in Kev with that <coughs> dosh. Right. Wake up the next morning, Gailey's like, uh, great white, great white, aren't you? Great white. She great white, she said, uh, I've got to go and pick up Jonathan Pierce at the airport today. He said, uh, I'm scared. <laughs> she said, I'm not going out there on my own. Could end up in jail in Siberia. Will you come with me to pick up John and Pierce for the airport in a Bro, taxi? Bro, so, bro. Tony, that's for doing Tony Cotty. That's Aye. a true Tony Gale story. Aye, the guy I'm winkling at because Alvin Aye. and Tony could both play football. <coughs> yeah. Both footballers. Mm-hmm. Phil Park's super goalkeeper. You've got <coughs> Wardy in the wing. Uh-huh. We've talked about you and, yeah. and Cotty. The one that fascinates me genuinely mm. is Alan Devonshire yeah. because when I watched him, he seemed to float across the pitch. Yeah. Brilliantly skilled, elegant. I could never understand why he wasn't England could all the never, time. He couldn't wear studs. He couldn't wear football studs. There was something wrong with his feet. And he couldn't wear screw-ins. He had to wear mouldies. Now, you imagine the balance on some of the pitches that we played on. You, I mean, we played one game. Just an example. We played against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. All white strip we were in. There's mud in my hair and my face. And we walked off at half-time. There's not a mark on Dev. He scored one... For about 30 yards. Is this the oh, yeah. the 4 0? Yeah, he scored one for about 30 yards. I'm, I'm looking at him, there's, there's only a dot when he's running up his back. <laughs> the balance of that boy was, was just incredible. Every pro I've talked to that knew him. He's up he's about the best, to... best I've ever played. Having Paul McStay, as a, as a midfield, for me as a striker, he, he, the perfect midfield player. What did he do with the ball? On the Tuesday night, my first game up front, this is how he said to me, and I thought you had a game. First game on Tuesday night, we're playing against QPR, and he said to me, Look, he says, when I get the ball, there's going to be three players on me. And he says, but he says, don't worry. He says, just look, just show for me. I'll knock it into you and just lay it off. I'll come and get it off you. And I thought, yeah, all right. I'll see how this one goes. And, and it was so easy. I used to just come out with the defender and he used to knock it into me. I used to leave it and turn the defender went with me and Dev just ran on it. It was unbelievable. And he said to me, he's managing Braintree. And I said, he's so knowledgeable at the game. Mm. I said to him, we're playing, you're not going to management. He says, I'll never get a manager's job, he says, because I make the game too simple. I have so simple. That's tragic, that. I mean, that's just, He says, the game's simple, and I, went, I couldn't complicate it enough. <laughs> so right, I mean, it's so right. Because that, that's one of the things that's a bit upsetting, because you know that the great players who can do it will always keep doing it. But great, great players who can do it and, and make it simple, yeah. Yeah. you could be an all-time great manager, because yeah. he was a great fella as well, eh? Yeah. You liked him as a bloke. Dev. Bro. Great football bloke. Great. He, used to, he was a bookie. He was a bookie. <laughs> <laughs> he used to take money off everyone. It was terrible, but he used to put, you know, I mean, take out bookies. So it's 
couple of pounds. It was great. It was great. Great lad. Never drove. Never had a car. All the good people. And he used, to, he used to, yeah, he used to people drive him. Can't remember we Italian guy. He used to drive him everywhere. Stylish. It was, uh, it was great. You see, what's coming out that mm. that might explain what we'll go on and talk about this extraordinary season where people who who either don't go back and research football or weren't alive at the time won't remember that what we're going to end up we'll cheat we'll tell the end of the story we're going to end up with West Ham's highest ever league yeah. position it's also going to be a season when you know we live in an era now of what well, what's Sky pay 4 billion for the rights yeah. but there's an argument over a couple of bucks and the first half of the season goes completely untelevised yeah. doesn't yeah. it one of the things before we talk about the season itself and the matches and, and the run that you go on and your goals what I've been led to understand is that the team spirit was extraordinary. No, it was incredible. Was, is, is that a factor in what's we, about we had, to happen? We had about seven. We, had, we went in seven games. I think we got beat with Luton. Or we drew with Luton. And we had a meeting on the Monday. Was it the Monday? I think it was a Monday. We had a meeting. No management, no coaches. Alvin called a meeting in, in Gailey. Since we need to sort this out. Basically what it was. Because I was what I, I was. I, I led for the front. I, I defended from the front. Mm-hmm. So I've always done it. So when the keeper flings the ball, I'll charge the defender. And if it needed, you could pass it back to the keeper. Yeah. And if Tony didn't shut the keeper down, and the midfield didn't get up and shut down, then I didn't, I didn't miss them. You know, so it all came ahead. We had a meeting, and Alvin and Gaelis says, look, he's going to do that, so we've got to go, we've got to go with him. After we had a couple of hours, John Lyle didn't come in, none of the coaches come in. We sorted it out, and we've told a few truths, you know, that we, you know, they have, we have to push on, we have to, Tony got a bit of stick. But it was good. It was not a stick. It was good. It was all. What they wanted? Did you play yeah. a higher line? Or? I wanted wanted Tony to to work basically. Mm-hmm. Tony was just a striker. Never done any work. And if I went to full back, close the keeper down. Don't let him get the keep. Don't let him pass it back to the keeper. And then we'll see. I should say. I said in the change room. There's not many great left backs about. While he's sitting TV offers like that. I said no disrespect, but there's not. You put some. You put you under pressure. You kick it out of the park. I said, so I'll put people under pressure. I said, and just make sure that they can't get an easy pass. Yeah. If they don't get an easy if somebody fires at 70 yards, then you've got to applaud it. I says, but not many people can do that. Coordination. Yeah. Two of you working like yeah. that. So Tony says, yeah, okay. And we went, we, we hadn't won a game, it was six games or something. That was when we went a run, we went a 20 game run, just by having that meeting. So in that meeting, there was, a, apart from clearing the decks, there was a lot yeah. of football brains. And, yeah. Because you, you haven't just shouted at each other, you've no, broken down, no, you've bro- changed the playing structure. Yeah, yeah, we, we spoke, it was great, Alvin it was, it, and Alvin, I think it might have been Alvin and Tony, Ray Stewart, you know, the boys, the experienced boys, Park said that, they all called the meeting, and it was great, and it, the, the biggest pro- problem was me and Tony, really. We drew with um, Liverpool, we, I scored two goals against Liverpool, we gave away easy goals, and I, I said it was from the front, because we never closed them. You've let them play, because yeah. you're well, talking about Alan Hansen and... Gee Hansen and... Uh, Lawrence and Gillespie. Yeah. So you let them play from the back and you're yeah, in trouble. You're in trouble, big yeah. trouble. So it was, it was that kind of thing. So that's, and that's when we went, I think it was 20 games we went unbeaten, which for West Ham was, was incredible. So in that 20 game run, what are the highlights for you personally as a team? <coughs> the away the wins? The... I mean, it's, I think everyone in the team's the same. Going to Stanford Bridge and battering them, that was the highlight of my career. Chelsea was the big... Big name at least. Big name, yeah. A big. Well, they weren't. They weren't the ones that the, the team they are now. But they were the kings of London and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and yeah, all, and yeah. Yeah, it was. And I'm thinking, yeah, I loved it. I, I, I really did. He's playing for the latest stage. Do Ruby's not arrived, or has he? And Rugby was yeah, yeah. Rugby. We Pat Evan. Rugby, big Joe McLaughlin was yeah. Joe think, from Watton. Yeah. Probably, presumably, yeah. you played against that against Samir and Morton yeah. game, did yeah. you? Yeah. That round for sure. Cup tie. It was yeah. Uh, big Joe could play. He was a sort of uh, great player. Yeah. A hand hitting kind of knockoff. It was, it was a bit heavier than hands. You couldn't run as quick. It was smooth. That big, Alan, though, was, eh? big Alan was smooth. Or smooth. Alan was probably the best, but he's probably the best in half I've ever played against. He wasn't the hardest, but God, he was hard to play against because he, he would touch you and you'd go up with your elbows and all of a sudden he would be stepping off you and you'd, you'd be swinging in and you'd look like a fool. <laughs> you know, and that was nice. And, you know, he was great. He used to always talk to you. She has, as a, yeah. as a Scotland fan, he went to 1982 and uh, was in the... The Malaga Stadium for the USSR game. I, I have to say, I'm a Willie Miller man in that yes, debate. Yes. But given that you played at the highest level, yeah. I didn't. I think I'll just yeah. give you that. Well, Willie, Willie and Alec were a great combination. Mm. Alan Hansen, I thought, partly in 86, that's why Kenny didn't go to the World Cup, because Sir Alex didn't pick Alan Hansen. And I couldn't believe why he didn't pick him, because it was a, he'd won two European championships. Mm-hmm. And you're going to play against the best in the world. He is one of the best in European football. Mm-hmm. Not just. He'd prove that. 
in Scottish football, but in English football, but in European, he could go and play against the best in Europe in the, in the way that he could play. Fergie never took him. And there was a bit of bad blood. There was a bit of bad yeah. blood, yeah. There was a bit, I mean, I'd scored 28 goals that year and mm. he never played me. <laughs> so I was a wee bit peed off, as you, you can imagine. You got a couple of sub appearances. Yeah, a couple of sub. I was sharing the room with Graham Sooners and, uh, and Graham told me that he was going to drop him one of the games. And terrible. And I thought, how can he drop you? Because Graham was the only superstar we had. Hell of a man, a, oh, a lead and a, great. a good guy, yeah. It's helped, him and Kenny helped me so much in my debut when I was yeah. in Scotland. Just two of my dad all the time and just talking to me and just, you know, making it easy for... For people that don't yeah. know him, he's not what he appears, I think. No, he's no, a, no, he's a great lad. He's uh, he's superb. I don't know why he fell out. I make jokes about it, but I think we fell out. We played against Northern Ireland before, over there, over it, And it was a known touch... Bingham was the manager of Ireland, mm. Northern Ireland. Mm-hmm. It was a non-touch, um, no tackling, no that. Mm. And and I walked off after about 20 minutes. I says, look, I can't do this. And mm. Peggy's like, just do it. And I says, look, I says, I'm going to the biggest game of my life, the biggest tournament of my life. Mm-hmm. I says, I need ta- p- tackles to come in so I can get my sharpness. And, you know, and if I get injured, so be it. I says, but I need to, I need to feel somebody. I kind of go and, test it, go and play in the street. You know, it's like, nobody, t- nobody tackling. I says, it's not what I need. You know, and... And Fergie didn't like it, but it was true, you know, because I've got I've got big I've got big Harry McDonald who wants to kick the lumps at me. Yeah. Um, and and we're not allowed to tackle each other, you know, and, and it was he didn't need a big heart, but you know, Peel like McDonald didn't need that because he's a big raw defend great great lad, but see, he wanted to come through me all the time. See, but I can draw conclusions from that. One of the uh-huh. things that like say Alec and Billy Bingham had, had done this as a pact with the idea that players don't get injured before uh, yeah, the World Cup. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. Sir Alex doesn't like you no, taking matters right. into your own hands and walking off. Yeah. But if I go back to that meeting uh-huh. where everything changes at West Ham, uh-huh. John Lyle's got John Lyle's in the same position as Alex so. Ferguson. He's going, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll let the guy, no. the guys have their word. I'll no. let the guys have their I'll listen to them. Mm-hmm. That's two completely different styles of management. Yeah. And and in John Lyle's case, it took I think it's a bigger man that well, can I say think, I think as you know through history with Fergie now, the other thing that was the issue was the press. If there was two players born into football to play together it was me and Charlie Nicholas it was by far there's just not two players meant for each other and the press knew that and the press took us away and got his photos with cowboy gear and all that on and Fergie took a dislike to it the press don't pick my team I get a brunt and I'm thinking I've scored 28 goals this mm. year mm. you know and he, he said to me after he named you'd, got, you'd got Scotland to the tournament yeah and we scored, the goal scored against one made one yeah scored one made one against so, Australia against the Australia so he said to me, over there, he named the team, and he could tell in my face, and he says, what's the matter with you? I says, well, you might be McGaffer, I says, but you're wrong. Mm. I says, there's no way. I says, Paul Sturrock, I says, no, I says, no disrespect, Paul. I says, he's not scored 28 goals in his career, and I gave all that. So, I shouldn't have said that, but it was just the way I it's felt. It's becoming a, reg- a regular feature. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Luggy. Aye, it was, I know, <laughs> oh, Luggy's a great lad. But, you know, he's, he's a great lad, but he's just... Uh, so this I is was, Denmark I wasn't happy. This is Denmark. Happy. Opening game in yeah, the 1986 World Cup. I wasn't happy, and then put me on the bench again, the next one. And then Sweet Gordon scores the goal. And then, and then, he's, <laughs> and then he, he never put me in against you like at, at all. all no. He left soon as it as well, and I'm thinking, God, how can you do that? So Graham was right. The one game you want somebody like Graham Sooners in your team is against you, the guy. Who, who go down to 10 men yeah. in the first five minutes. Yeah. yeah. And you want somebody like Sooners in there to control everything. Organise the game, yeah. open them up. And it was, uh, it was just wrong. It, I think we had the squad there that we could have been on. We, a fair game. I didn't speak to him for ten years, you know. Mm. Fair game. Don't hold a grudge. And I spoke <laughs> to him. I spoke to him at John Lyle's memorial night. Because John and he were yeah, friendly. Yeah. Well, if I'm not I didn't wrong, until he went up stage. I'm sitting with Ray Winston. He went up stage, and he told the story. That he, when he came down to Man United, he didn't know anyone in English football. No. And he spoke to John. And John was great. And he said, I don't, "John, I'm, I'm out my depth." He said, "I don't know anyone." He said, "I know everyone in Scotland. I know them inside out." And mm. He says, "But I don't know anyone in England." The following morning, or two days later, not for the two days later, a courier van arrived at my United's training ground and John had sent up a dossier on every player in the Premiership, or the First Division, mm-hmm. and sent him everything that John's got over the years. He just copied and sent it to him. People's yeah. generosity in yeah. football, yeah. that doesn't get talked about often. Maybe you know yeah. it happens more regularly yeah. than that, yeah. but for us outside, yeah. we would say, yeah. That never happens. It's dog eat dog, but yet John Lyle. John, John gave him everything. He's opened his notes. Yeah, gave him everything and says, there you go. And that's, that gives you a wee heads up. And I thought, you know, that was why, because I couldn't understand it was that the Memorial Night was midweek and they were playing on a Wednesday in a Champions League game. 
This is United, Man United are playing yeah. and, under um, Fergie, Fergie with Fergie's John Dice. Fergie's John Dice in 2006, right? Yeah, and, and uh, Fergie's turned up on Tuesday night at one of these dinners at, at Upton Park. And he got a private plane down, a private plane back, just to be at John's. And, and that changed, you know, and I said, box, I don't care what I think of him, you know. Judges that's, apart, let's, yeah, let's make yeah. the peace. So I spoke to him, and he said, Frank, he says, no, see, I thought you were dead. I said, no, <laughs> not yet. And he said, did Daniel come to your funeral? I said, no, he sent a jersey. <laughs> so, it was all right, but we had a chat, and I admitted he made a mistake, made a few mistakes. Never even mentioned me, he just says, look, I made a few mistakes at World Cup, he says, but, you know. You see, see Alex Ferguson, without romanticising it, and people who've listened to the podcast have heard me say this before, but I'll say this to you, because it's yeah. true. Mm-hmm. You grow up as a kid yeah. in Aberdeen, yeah. and your horizons, horizons are small. So Alex Ferguson takes over and shows you a winning team. Oh, yeah. You don't just enjoy it, you go, yeah. see if you work really hard, yeah. or see if you're ambitious or arrogant or, or aggressive, yeah. your world gets bigger. So that's what he did to me. That's what he did to me. So if I'm ever critical of him, mm-hmm. I, I try to be very, oh, no, very careful. No, I don't know. But what I, mean, I would say... I can't def- be critical. I can tell him... In defending him before that 86, mm-hmm. the impact on him of Jockstein dying yeah. on route to that qualification, because I was watching as a fan... And, 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 and I couldn't picked, understand. Jock wouldn't pick me for Scotland. They picked me, Charlie Nicholas, and Mo Johnson one one game, and the three sneaked out, and I get to blame it. <laughs> the three sneaked out, and I get to blame it. They, they so, dragged so, you, aye. Aye, uh, they dragged me. They did <laughs> actually <they> dragged me. <laughs> I was there in the under twenty one game, the overage player again, and Charlie and Mo, Mo were at the barn. They're going, hurry up! I was playing. I was just making my comeback at the reserve game at St Mun, and I turned up. I said, hurry up! And I said, what? So we're going out. <laughs> Yeah, all right, so yeah, I had, right. had my tracks and all, and I had to go up and get changed. And we three sneaked out the kitchen, and big jock. Didn't know I was there, he, he caught Mo and Charlie, and, and the floor had went more than the third floor, and the, the lift had stopped at second. And Charlie had kicked me out, I thought it was the floor, and they, they'd laughed him went away. And he caught them, going in, and he didn't know I was out, and of course I walked up the stairs. <laughs> so I'm walking up the stairs, I walked out, and the rust and the lift waiting me, and like, oh, oh, So I get to blame it. But like, so, I mean, Jock was even more strict and stentorian on, oh, yeah. on drinking than Alec was. But my understanding of Sir Alex's relationship with Jock Steen is that I look back at the '86 World yeah. Cup and the decisions he made and how things went, and I have to think that he was still not for six by Jock's death. I, I think no. maybe, maybe that means nothing. Maybe no, that's maybe I'm wrong. wrong. He was pals with Jock, so I, he, would you ever go over something like that? I don't know. But if you're going to a career in football you've got to go over you've got to go over things like that and you've taken really? you've taken the team to the World Cup and I believe that there was a team there that could have went to the group stage it could oh. have went you know it could have got further well look at it the, the Denmark game is a very very good Denmark yeah. with Preben and Elkjar yeah. and Michael Lidder and the rest mm-hmm. it's 1-0 and nothing yeah. in it and they follow Willie Miller for the goals for yeah. it, it's yeah. 2-1 against Germany Gordon scored a great goal they, yeah. they barely squeaked past us I know and one goal one goal one goal should have through. Through. I know it was, it was a big difference it was a big I mean, Stephen Echo hit the bar in the last couple of minutes. I thought, I had to stay on two weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everybody booked a holiday. <laughs> it was, I was looking forward to be To be honest, I was looking forward to getting home there because I thought, Fergie's not going to play me now, so... But we've dived um, into that World Cup because your 86 was yes. so good. So that 20-game run, you talked about absolutely thumping <laughs> Chelsea. When I came back, this is how much the West Ham team meant to me. When I came back from Australia, we flew to Australia, and I came back, we arrived on the Saturday morning in a Heathrow airport, and all the players were going away and none of them were going to play and I phoned John and he says, oh, is that you back? Just go home and get a rest. And I says, no, I want to play. Brilliant. And he says, what? Says, this is jet lagged ah, after drawing 0-0 lagged. Australia to get ah. through to the World Cup finals. And he says, Frank, he says, you've been on a plane for 20 hours. He says, I says, John, staying up has never been my problem. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, he says, come to the hotel. And I went to the hotel and he says, honestly, I said, yeah, I want to play. And we played against QPR because it was such a buzz to play for us. I mean, yeah, and the run we were on and we beat QPR. 1-0 and I scored the goal <laughs> I was hopeless but I scored the goal so it was in the plastic pitch as well wasn't it oh, that yeah. was a horrible pitch we, we kept the run going because you know it was 1-0 it was a big game for us it was mob I remember it was absolutely heaving the ground and uh, you can imagine I slept for about two days after that so, you, go, you, go, you, you go on to get 26 goals league and, goals yeah. and that's sufficient yeah, league yeah, goals yeah. right because yeah. mm-hmm. the total in all comps is higher yeah, that was higher yeah. you click with Tony uh-huh. everything's working the team's superb Maybe there's a wee gap at left back, maybe. Yeah. Well, I've said, there's no disrespect to Wally, but if Julian Dix had went, but the second time I'm back to West Ham. Where, where is Julian at this stage? He wasn't, he wasn't, I don't know where he was, but he wasn't at West Ham. Um, but when I went back to West Ham, Julian was there. 
I would only change one. I mean, there's a lot of players you could change better players, but if we had Julian Dix at left back that year, we'd have won a thing. What was so good about him? You know, they could buy him, you know, yeah. and his distribution was honestly for a striker, he could ping balls 40, 50 yards right on Find him. you. Yeah, it was great. It was great. I mean, he didn't look the part. He <laughs> <laughs> didn't look the part, you know, but he looked like a Ned. Slightly wild. <laughs> yeah, well, we, did what he wanted in training him. He told. did what he wanted. Me, ugh, yeah. He used to tell me and him used to get jump milk floats and that, and run. We had to run round. We had to go round Romford. I mean, Dixie jumped the milk float and told the driver to go. <laughs> and other boys are running round Romford. You take a team run. We're in the we the milk float. <laughs> We didn't like her running. My dick, myself and Dixie didn't like her. So. But we used to share a room. And Dick, I remember one time we were playing, and one of the boys, Jimmy Quinn, I think it was, he was, he, he was at Swindon, we were playing Swindon, and he, he wanted to stay over, he was going to play golf for the following day. So he said, yeah, all right, so these golf clubs. And he said, I don't want to leave it, because he was sharing with Martin Allen, and Martin Allen's nuts. He said, I'm not leaving my clubs in the room, he'll hit me with him or something like that. So they, they gave him, and his wisdom he gave it to me and Dixie. And we'd, we were bored very easily, so about one o'clock, we were like, Phew. And it was in the days, it was the sky and all that, you know, so I said, oh, get the clubs out. So we got the clubs out and we got the balls out and we're chipping, trying to chip it in one of the waste paper bins, you know, the tin bins. We're trying to chip the ball in and, and of course it was thumping on the door, thumping <laughs> on the door. And then we said, we'll try and bounce it once out the window. And we dumped the windows. Like, oh, crazy. And they kept banging the door and Billy Bonds was the gaffer at the time. Legend. And he came up and I've looked, I said, it's just the gaffer. And he went, open the door. And he came in and there's golf balls everywhere. <laughs> The clubs are relying on it. I swear, I've never seen him so relieved. Right? <laughs> he looked and he went, and it was because he must have thought, fucking, they having a party in there. Exactly, or what's and going he on? Seen, and he's opened the door and he's went, oh, I don't even want to know, he says. He was quite happy that there was, was no balls, you know. He was, Talk about crazy golf. He thought all oh, this banging was something else. You know? <laughs> so, but, so if Dixie's in the team, maybe, yeah. you think over a season it no changes No disrespect it, to Stephen Walford. No, none at Stephen all. Walford, but, you know, Dixie was a was wonderful player. But I'm going to go back to what Russell said. Uh-huh. And he asked a really good question. He sort of said, where are the points that slipped away that could have won you the title? Chelsea, we could beat Chelsea up to Park and Tony Gill got injured. That was a killer. So that's the return. But we went in a run. We went at the beginning of the season. We, we dropped a few points, which was really... Yeah, they count as we, much, we but you don't notice them yeah, as much. Yeah, you don't notice them as much. Yeah. But we dropped points. It was terrible, honestly. The, the kind of, but you've explained already, that's yeah. when the team's not clicking. Yeah, the team wasn't working. And, and it just clicked. Honestly, it just clicked. Well, then it was just the magic. It just clicked after that. that you know, and Tony... And Tony so, admitted, Tony caught it, he went on to become a better player because he, not only was he just a finisher, he, he put in a shift. Worked harder. You know, and, and he became a better player because of it, you know. But you talked about, so the order of the Chelsea games is the, the 4-0 at Stamford Bridge is the yeah. first of the two games, is yeah. that right? Yeah, and then we... So you got the return beat, up to Park, what happens? We get beat 2-1, which was, was, uh, it was terrible. Tony Gale got injured and, and they put Neil Orr in centre-half. And Pat Nevin scored me for, for all people. Pat Nevin, you know. Not always. Ah, he's just got his head, so I was ah. like that. And we get beat with Forrest away. Johnny Met. Johnny Method? Johnny Method scored one. I can't Thanks remember. Real Madrid. I can't remember. Somebody ducked. I can't remember who it was. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> this is not a visual medium, no. so <laughs> if I don't judge it, because there's a yeah. look of guilt in Frank's face yeah. now. I'm only getting it. What do you mean, no? Okay, no, okay. Me. Tony Cotty, Tony Cotty, are you hearing your name? It's not. I can't okay. remember. Okay. What? Okay. What? Right. Right. I'm sure. But something anyway, and parts it just I mean, three hands. It was, and that was a big, that was a killer. You know, that was a, that was a big loss. I would pick it. Was Forrest it? The, the in Nottingham, ground, yeah, it was in Nottingham. But we, we battered them. We absolutely battered them. So there was a lot of games, and you know, you could look back to each game against Liverpool. It was incredible. You know, I scored two, and I was we were so, but they were, they were so good, Liverpool. They just kept the ball. They didn't go. They didn't panic. They just kept it. I mean, Kenny Douglas. I became friends with him. He says we were the best team that year. Mm. So for him to say that. Best they played against or best full stop? But, but first According first, to him. I, I had, on, best. In that season, yeah, we were the best. We should have won it. We Big praise. We only used 14 players in one season. No, that's incredible. That's right? in, I think George Paris went up front <laughs> when I was when I went to Australia. In one game and George Scott's and I mean, I came back, I, I wouldn't let him play up front again. This <laughs> 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 season, no. So... It was, it was a strange, it was really a strange... What made it strange it as, as well is that, um, this is a well-known story, but it's uh, true, so mm-hmm. I said, like you're practically unknown. Yeah. Because in those days, there's no internet, Scottish yeah. football's not covered great in England, yeah. which made me think of the Devonshire story, is that you didn't know much about Devonshire, probably uh, more yeah, about him, but he didn't know anything about you as a no, player when no, he said, they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't even pronounce my name when I'm down. 
So in, it, None of the boys could pronounce my name. And given the fact that there's a TV uh, strike... And of course, by the time I got there, I had blonde hair that time. So I was ginger, it's at mum. <laughs> so all the boys, when it showed you a clip... No. It shows you a clip of me, because I was... And I've got all the boys are going, where are you? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's me there with the red hair. <laughs> They're going, no. It's like, it's up, yeah. But that was, if that was good for the country yeah. too, because yeah. half the season's no, untelevised. No. Tell I us the Dennis Watts Eddie Morgan story. I've done, done the St. Greaves show, the first St. Greaves show. First remember. ever? Aye, I've done the first I loved the show, but I don't remember they this one. They had me on, Brian Moore was, I can't remember, somebody had me on, no, Rosenthal. Jim Rosenthal Jim. Was, had me on the London Bridge. And I had a pink jumper on and all that, and a bit rough for the night before, but they took me <laughs> on. And they were saying, I was the top goal scorer in, in England. They yeah. were saying, Stop people in London Bridge, taxi drivers and all that. Who's the top goal scorer in first division? Oh, yeah, yeah, that West Ham player, what's his name? Mackie Doogie and all that. And <laughs> what does he look like? Big guy with a beard and all that. And they're going, <laughs> that's him. They're going, nah. <laughs> that was not a wee guy. Another Jeremy Doodle moment. Yeah, it really one, is. It's one of them. Yeah, it's me, honestly. <laughs> so that was, that was strange. And I went back to the studio and Billy Conley was there. <laughs> and Billy Conley's going, how you doing, Frank? Chatting away. And Jeff's going, ah, do you know each other? And he said, yeah, yeah. And he said, do you mind? Because nobody, you know, this is the programme we're doing. Billy said, no, no problem. So they says, right, rolling. He says, Billy, do you know this guy? He says, yeah, of course I do. He says, who is it? He says, Hugh McElvary. Billy, just laugh. Brilliant. <laughs> That was him, he just walked away. Oh, fair play. <laughs> he just walked away. Genius, yeah. Bro, so it was good. It was all good that year. And did, when the St. Greaves, did yeah. that to you, does that, did people start well, to... What changed, what changed my life, to be fair, was the Wogan show. That, well, you see, that's, that's, a, I, that's a big one. You call it the Wogan show. As yeah. an Aberdonian, yeah. I would call it the Dennis Lowe show. Sorry, Dennis because Lowe the greatest show, yeah. ever Aberdonian. Yeah. If I'm it not wrong, he's with you. Dennis came down. I, I don't get nervous so much. And There was 22 million people watching on a Friday night. 17... Uh, Tuesday and Thursday, I don't know, man, Monday and Wednesday, it was only three times a week. It was. But it was 20, 22 million viewers. <laughs> and Dennis came down, he came from so many, he says, Frank says, I've got a home issue. And I'm going, what? He said, I've got a home issue. He said, I've not brought a, brought a pair, of set, pair of set of shoes. He says, so if I cross my leg, he says, give me a knock. And I says, yeah, all right, no worries. So we're having a laugh and, <laughs> and Shack Attack were on it, the guy was on Shack Attack and the guy from Edmondson from the, the young ones. Oh, Ed Edmondson, oh, okay. He came yeah. bouncing through a wall and all that, right? He was nuts. <laughs> and then Wogan's talking about me, because I was just about to make my debut uh, for Scotland. Ah, OK. And, and uh, I was taking... This would be a halfway through <laughs> the season yeah, or spring well, or... October. I was top goal scorer. And I was just... Because I didn't make my debut till November for Scotland. As I say, all the TV blackout. It was a TV blackout, yep, wasn't it? So, yep, yep. And he was getting all this and he was going on about... One's legend of Scottish football. One was just about to make his career and all that. And just as he said that, Dennis said to me, he turned around and he says, don't worry about me, man. He says, don't get nervous, there's only 22 million people watching. <laughs> as if I'm going to get all nervous. And I says, Dennis, it's not me, it's got home with you. <laughs> so, so, so that was it. I mean, it's such a good laugh, you know, it didn't bother me. And Wogan, I felt I was going to bring him down because he says, hey, all your people, all your pals at, up at St Mun, where you, where you come from. And I was like, you know, and I was going to say, St Mun's a, a football club, it's not it's not a place, you know. West Ham East do, do you, I know, do your homework, but I know it was good, but it changed my life because on the Saturday I played football. My mum was going to a stairway and my brother lives over there and she was going to a stairway on the Sunday and she flew down to London and she had two hours or three hours before she flew out to Australia. So I said, I'll come and meet you and have a bit, of, uh, a bit of lunch and all that. And I drove to the airport, parked the car and I walked around. As soon as I walked into the airport, there was a queue for people wanting photographs and autographs. It was a weird old, thing. Old, it was older people. Yeah. You know, granny's not like, oh, how are you doing, son, and all that. And I was like, and I thought, I couldn't, Click, you know, I didn't click really. Saturday night, I knew something because I, I came out of You didn't click in terms of you didn't, you didn't part relate part it to Wogan. Part, no, I didn't click what was happening because yeah. a girl came in to me on Saturday night and said to me, Frank, the press was outside waiting. I'm going, what are you waiting for? And she said, Well, everyone knows what you look like now. <laughs> and all the, it was a paparazzi, it wasn't the sports press. Yeah. No, we outside waiting for me. And I did run out. And I remember a chic was there and he, he gave me his car to take. He said, Take it. And, my name, Peter says, look, just go, Margot, the girl was photographer. Didn't know I lived in Essex. Oh, he, he thought I lived around the corner. He thought I lived around the corner. So, <laughs> take my car, I said, no problem. I've done all his drink now. <laughs> in the limo bar? <laughs> in the limo bar. <laughs> How'd you get back in that club? How'd you ah, get back brilliant. in? It was brilliant, ah, it was good. So, um, and that was it. So, that changed, that was a wee bit 
can awesome, I, you know, a wee bit. Can can I, I, I ran out in the road. Yeah, look, yeah. I don't know if you found it, like, a, a motor, where you found it, something that was useful to your fun or whatever. I, I would imagine, people always lust after fame. People nah. that will be listening to this and think, I'd like to be famous. Nah. But I'll give you any money <laughs> that, that being famous or being recognised didn't equate to one good nah. laugh in the dressing room, one nah. good training session, a great goal, nah. a victory at the nah, nah, it's, it's not... It doesn't come close, does it? I remember, I remember seeing a couple of boys when I played with St Murn and I remember seeing some boys and uh, Charlie was one of them, Charlie Nick, when I was at St Murn and he refused people an autograph one night in a club and I thought, I'd never do that, you know, nobody knew who I was when I was at St Murn. And I've not, to be fair, I've never done it, I've never refused an autograph or a photograph or I don't get all that. You see players nowadays, they're getting so much money and they want to sneak out the back door and all that mm-hmm. and I'm seeing these people standing pissing in the rain and mm. waiting for hours. I mean, I, I remember booting Decano out his backside because there was a young boy waiting for hours and Decano just... This is Celtic. To, no, it's West Ham. They tried to run no. by him. Booted him. <laughs> I'd been drinking all day, obviously. <laughs> he was giving it all that. I said, ah, oh, shut up. He's still the right going. thing. Yeah. He says, give the little boy, look, he's going to end up with Yamona, the kid, you know. Mm. And he went, catch a flight. I said, yeah. And you know as much as what I used to do. I used to catch flights all the time, but he still, he said, come on, run with me, son. And just get yeah, yeah, to go nice. with you, you know, you just yeah. do it. So, I played a game up at Celtic Park recently in Rio, Paul's Day in Rio Ferdinand, a big charity thing, and there was yep. thousands, about 40,000 now. And I, I took my out to get in my car, because I mm. other boys are going out the back, and I'm going, what are you doing? You know, I just, we weren't going to a hotel, meeting up for drinks, and I just, I got there about an hour later, because mm-hmm. I thought, no, I'm not doing it. You know, so. People are worth it. Yeah, it's cool, so it's, it's, just, it's just something you don't do. You it's a little don't, cheat. Don't, it's cheap for me, because we're not videoing this. I'm going to uh-huh. cheat and say that, you know, they, they, it's not what Frank's saying, the sincerity is there, yeah. and that's something you've either yeah. got inside you, oh, you don't. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> People matter or they don't. Yeah. Of course they do. But we were in a Wogan then, you got famous, but you you were inviting Wogan with Dennis because things were going so well yeah. for you. Yeah. When we come to the end of the season, I, I can't remember what happened to you, but I remember you've got a pile up of fixtures. Now you're competing mm-hmm. principally with Kenny's, yeah. if we call him one call it, actually hold on a second, it was Kenny and Rush, weren't it up front? It was Kenny, there was, there and was three you, doubles. TC. It was me and Tony, Kenny and Rush. David Speedy and Kerry Dixon. At Chelsea. Unbelievable. Yeah. The unbelievable. Were. And then you, I think Lineker was at, uh, can't remember where he was at Tottenham, he was at Everton. He was at Everton. He, he, but he didn't he went, play he as a e- partnership, did he? No, but he did. Aye, why? He not have a wee inchy heath, aye. Off the, off the side of him, aye. was up there, so, I mean, it was good, it was good double acts, but, and then there's both, I mean, Tony scored 20 odd goals as well, so Tony got, I get 26 league goals, Tony got 20 league goals. And Kenny's a bit, you know, Kenny a lot of learn off Kenny. Kenny was more a provider as well, you know, he was... He was like you, he was very yeah. generous, yeah, for somebody's in a better position. And, you know, Rush wouldn't pass too much, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good, you know, it was, it was just a great... But everyone, that's why I laugh nowadays, because people say, ah, oh, they're tired, I'm saying, tired? We played, we played Saturdays. Monday and Wednesdays for about six weeks. Why, what, what happened with the, the weather? The, was the, it? the weather... It was, it was a postponed game. Played, we never played. We never played for so long. We were in. We had three replays against Ipswich in the cup. Oof. We had two against Man United in the cup, and it was just we went for everything. Stupid. We should just have you know let one go and played kids. Mm-hmm. We all wanted to play in every game. You know, going to Old Trafford, we drew them up in Park. Went to Old Trafford, beat them, mm-hmm. and then we I think we could beat in the quarters. It was Sheffield Wednesday, but it was, it was just we were too far gone. You know, it was. But we did for six weeks. We played Saturdays, Mondays, and Wednesdays. That's extraordinary. Uh, isn't it? Yeah, just well, we've, it's tough enough. Hindsight, it's like two man squad. Uh, it was, it, to me, I, you, you can honestly say that the weather beat us that year because people just wouldn't. They, it wouldn't be allowed nowadays. They, they and would, the pitches are genuinely like atrocious. Eh? Yeah, they were terrible. They were terrible. We played. There was one game, a replay against that switch from Beatham down at Portland Road. I mean, you're looking at a pitch and you're going, people are sliding all over the place. It was icy. But we had to play it because we, we just couldn't. It was, it was white, the snow was white, and it was just, they'd drawn lines down the, down did the pitch. Take, did it take you back to deaf and dumb school? Yeah, well, it was... It you know, when you learn something was, there... Was, you had to get balance, you know, it was... We couldn't wear studs because the ground was so hard. So had to wear rubbers, it moldies. had to wear moldies. And we Tony scored, we beat them 1-0, but it was a hard-fought game. And it, what ends up yeah. is that by the time it's in the running, mm. it takes something out of you, yeah. right? Because yeah. Liverpool well, we, we in the went, middle of... We went, this is how close it went. We went to West Brom. On a Saturday, last last Saturday of the season. But the way it worked out, if Liverpool had drawn with Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, mm-hmm. it meant Everton couldn't win the league. Mm-hmm. Only we could. We played them on the Monday. If if Chelsea beat Liverpool, it meant, because he didn't get that point, it meant Everton could win the league. 
It was, it was so close. It was that that close. It's it was really league. We won two one. I scored. Tony scored, and we come off the pitch and we get told that it was a draw at Stamford Bridge. So you can imagine the delight because we'd have beat Everton. There's no problem with the beat Everton. John Lyle come in and I swear on it, I've never seen so many grown men cry when he told us that was, Kenny had scored with a couple of minutes to go. <sighs> My idol, I can't believe it. It was bum like, information. Ah, so I didn't want to play no Monday. I'm saying I don't want to play. And uh, it, was, it was horrible. It really was horrible. I didn't, I didn't even know Gary Lineker scored two on the Monday and beat me for the Golden Boot. I didn't realise, I didn't even know that I was in the running. The European Golden Boot? Aye, uh, so Gary Lineker, but he's, listen, Gary took 12 penalties, I never took one penalty. Yeah. So all mines were front play, so I say I should get a boot for that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was I, I didn't even care about it, you know, it was one of them. So the uh, boys are in tears because the, the, there's the, nothing the, the title was there for uh, maybe for the first time in West Ham's history the yeah, title was there. The title was there, never be there again, never be that close again. Or we done our bit and all we had to do was get Chelsea to draw. Just draw with, with Liverpool because we'd have bad um ever on the Monday. But mm. I've never seen honestly so many grown men. Alvin didn't want to play, I didn't want to play and I mean not we're gonna get beat three one, I think, but because it's a ghost team, and you're not really not, there in spirit, no. are you? I was there. I wanted, I knew I was going to World Cup, and I wanted to go on holiday before running away, and it was just, I just wanted a break. And it was, it's funny, you know, director at West Ham, I can't remember, Jack Peach, Peachy, we used to do time shares. He sent us to this place. He said, go, go there, son. Just get away. Use my penthouse, not. I said, oh, thanks very much. Mm. Turned up and mine at pool with a girlfriend, and everyone's going, all right, Frank, how you doing? I was like, Everyone knows me. <laughs> we're in the reception because we go down the middle of the night. We're in the reception. There's a big poster. Everyone at the time share went, wishes Frank Mackie Benny in the Scotland team all the best. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> use, use, use me again. I was like, but I was too tired. I just I had a couple of beers every day and that was it for a week and just chilled before I went to the World Cup. It's awful sore when that happens, eh? Yeah. It was, it was that... the biggest disappointment in, in my football life. That was, yeah. you know, it was, it was horrible because we honestly got told it was a draw. So we took it, we'd, we'd have won the league on the Monday. Let's do something to, to cheer this, the thing up there, yeah. because um, still West Ham's highest ever mm-hmm. finish. Russell's asked again, your favourite all-time West Ham players, please. Favourite all-time West Ham player? You, his, Russell's are, Paulo Di Canio, uh, Julian uh, Dix and you. <laughs> Literally, mine, that's, that's mine would be, um, I was very fond of Brooklyn, you know, but everyone knew Brooklyn. He's just no mad cup of tea, Tev. It's too nice for me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I was oh. very fortunate to go out twice with Bobby Moore. I had an agent who was friendly with Bobby, so in London we went out with Stephanie a couple of times, and and it was lovely. And I do an omni play. I sign when I say not dress me. I sign be lucky, and that was Bobby's. Bobby's yeah. That was Bobby's, and I thought, oh, that's really nice. And then when he died, I says, I'm using it. That was me. Terrible, terrible else. young he died, Oh, eh? God, yeah. But Stephanie was great, because when I'm back... I mean, West Ham's been great with me. When I get into trouble years ago, I'm not going to all that, but when I get into trouble, West Ham phoned me up and says, come and do some work for us. Brilliant. And you just, That's what you want in life, you know, not just in football. You know, and, and whereas the team up here just don't want to know me, so, mm-hmm. you know, you're not allowed an opinion up here. Well, you're allowed an opinion, but as long as it coincides with Peter Lobo, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm, I'm not really interested in them. West Ham, I love them to death, you know, mm-hmm. I'll never say, and it's good when you're on social media and you say something about West Ham, people come back and they have a discussion with you, and they have a dis- and you can have a discussion with Is this people. to do with the, the, the sort of wrong thing with John Lyle? <laughs> yeah. So many decades of football. Yeah. They want to play well, they yeah. want to understand football, they I mean, want to be entertained, <laughs> they want to see local I mean, boys. Just, people say to me, what is, what is football? What is it West Ham? I'm saying just play football. That's West Ham to get a ball down and play. You know, or this big Sam launching it. It's not for you, West you couldn't Ham. buy that. No, no matter what he did for the club, no, I couldn't. You do didn't that. feel just, right. You know, I didn't. I didn't, I didn't sit there right with me. I liked Sam when I went to watch him at Bolton. I was involved with agency, and I thought the coaching or I thought the he signed got, extraordinary got football. The ball it? down and John K F. And they could play JJ. the ball. And if, it, if yeah, and if it went against them, they could launch a ball. And I didn't yeah. see a problem with that. Yeah. But it just seemed to be he bought Carroll. Everything went long, and I'm thinking, even as a striker, when the ball's coming that way, you want the ball coming across yeah, high, yeah. so you can go and get it. You don't want it, so you've just got to flick it on. It was te- terrible football, terrible to watch. And he put all his eggs in one basket with Andy Carroll, and, it, and it's sunk. And Andy's not a bad player. No. Um, he's a good option now. You can f- fire the ball up to him, but, you know, I, I can't wait to Sacco and I get him back, because Sacco's a good player. Sacco and Valencia. You'd enjoy Payet? Oh, God, yes. God, yes, a striker. I'd enjoy Play a little bit, yeah. Too. Yeah, he can play the boy. So Andy Carroll, no harm to him, is not in your top three no, West Ham no. players, but Bobby's number one now. Bobby, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby, yeah. Um, I'd need to say, I mean, I, I did like Britain, but Devonshire, and, you know, and 
know a player, but John Lyle would be. Yeah, that's my three. Yeah, my three big ones. That I don't think John ever played football, but he'd be in my top three. Let's leave the celebrity and the string yeah. fellas to one side. What was it like? Mm. Were you allowed to? Were you able to go out drinking with the fans in East End? Yeah, I did it all the time. Yeah, seriously, I did it all the time. Yeah, you know they always looked after me, the boys. The, you know I used to get. Well, I'm thinking last going I had to go finish. I thought, you know, didn't matter. I, I couldn't see the point sitting in a Saturday night, you know, when if they give results. So I used to go out. I used to stop at some of the pubs and then we went to London. But they, they, you felt people. a part of community. Yeah, definitely. It was great to me. It was very much like these down to Glasgow. It was very much like Glasgow. That's what I thought. It was, it was home for home for me, really. Once I slowed down and started speaking very <laughs> slow, I, people could understand me. Now you, you, and I just became, I think because you know, because of how I got into football, I went through the terrace and onto the park. Basically, that's, I went one, one day I was there. I mean, Tommy Burns used to say to me when I played against him at St Man, when I was at St Man, he used to say, no, just have a turn. You just went through there to there. You know, and then when I went to Celtic, Tommy says, nobody's ever done that. You know, nobody's ever... I mean, everyone's been Celtic supporters coming through the ranks, but I, I just went through the terrace and used to pay and to watch Roy Aitken and all the boys, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm playing the same picture. Could, could you have come through an academy? No, no chance, not a chance. Aye. No chance, no. I couldn't have done it. I don't know how Charlie could be... He's been slightly rebellious. Yes, I don't know how Charlie could have done that, you know. And well, I don't know either, and you know it better than me, Aye. but when he sat here, mm. he said that... He lived in awe of people like Danny McGrain. Yes, of course. And, and also, Charlie's not yeah, all that he's no. No, I know portrayed he's, to be. Listen, it's a, it's a big front. We've all got a big front. A, I've got a bigger front than Harrods, to be honest with you. It's, uh, that's Charlie's what, the same. That's you, what I was talking about, the loneliness of London. Yeah, you put this thing on. If you're able, like, you, <coughs> you could handle the fame, you yeah. could handle sitting yeah. there with Dennis or whatever, but underneath, mm -hmm. you're a different person. We all live Sometimes and breathe. Sometimes I go, my missus, my girlfriend at the moment, she's noticed right away. She went, there's two sides to you, there's Frank and there's Maka. And when I go out and if I'm speaking or not, my cap appears. You change. You know, I just, that's about the punters want. See, if I was really cheeky, <laughs> I might talk about, who's the man from Bordeaux? Is it? Is it oh, Paul I don't know. There you go. Oh, Let, let's move, we'll come back. That's in the second podcast <laughs> with you. I want to close, I want to let you off the hook. With two right. I, I told you George told me this. Now, why are you not an Arsenal player? The way George tells it right, is on. that he fancied you rotten, mm -hmm. thought a fantastic footballer, mm -hmm. The way, t this is now, he told me this before I went to Spain, so I'm talking about a tale that was told to me in about 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. but allegedly, he thought he had you, mm -hmm. you were coming back from Celtic, you wanted to be down in London, mm -hmm. and instead of signing for Arsenal, you yeah, went out clubbing, or, or I went, it's no, close to that anyway, at least. The truth is, it was nothing to do with George, it was nothing to do with Arsenal. When I went back down to London, West Ham wanted me and Arsenal wanted me. Arsenal were going to win the league, West Ham were going to get relegated. Simple. Oof. Celtic had hurt me so much, to be honest with you, they'd hurt me big time. They'd me money, fortunes. Really? Well, I'd signed for I Celtic. I didn't know that. I'd signed for Celtic, that's why I wanted to leave. Yeah. Because I'd signed and they owed me about 80 or 90 grand, never paid me it. So I, I was so disillusioned, you know, because what I'd done for them. Yeah. And I just, and, I, and then I get told I wasn't getting it, and I was, you know, I was in tears because I thought I was not leaving. I didn't think I would leave um, Celtic when you I were home and that was I, you. I thought that was me. Yeah. I thought I'd have been there. I thought I'd get testimonial and everything. That's what. That, honestly, that's what I thought. Yep. And I never got it. It was all bored and all. I never paid my money, and I was. I kept arguing about it and arguing about it, and, and eventually just says, "Look, I've had enough." It's hard in life for yeah. whatever situation. If you People feel you've been yeah, cheated, you left and all. I'm going. Like, oh, they owed me fortune. They still owe me money. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, it sounds stupid, but I was so disillusioned. I just wanted no, no, to be I don't loved. Think it does. No, I, I just wanted to be loved and. And I thought, I don't have to prove anything at West Ham. You know, I don't have to prove nothing. And if I go to Arsenal, I don't know if I can go through all that again, you know, stepping into somebody's shoes. And, and it would be the comparison with Charlie, and I don't know if I could have done that. And it was one of them, I just, my confidence was shattered, and I thought I'd just go to West Ham. And I didn't, I, I had to speak to John anyway. And I, and I spoke to John, I spoke to George. And one thing I was good at, it was I had a couple of pastry girls <laughs> upstairs getting ready, because I was staying in a hotel. When we met him. This is when you're speaking to John or yeah, George? Yeah, George. George. Oh, George. Aye, it was George. a holiday in, in Mayfair and a couple of girls upstairs getting ready and, and George and I was I was getting on. 12 o'clock by 12. And I said to me, you finish this. I said, George, I'll give my answer tomorrow. And he says, where are you going? And I says, I'm going to Tramp nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked at me and said, you, you having a laugh? <laughs> I went upstairs looking back down at two page three girls and mum and George's face. <laughs> but it was priceless. I asked the question. No, you know, it, was, it was just honestly priceless. And I'm going, George, you see the white cup? 
<laughs> oh, give me space. It was like, but you, no, he was said, if that was me, I'd have went, I'd have went. <laughs> <same compliment. laughs> By the bar, but yeah, you tomorrow. Just sign us. <laughs> but what a compliment to you because George knew, yeah, he done you're a good pro and uh, trained well. Uh, that you could go out at night. Now, George didn't like that much. I know that was a well, drinking well, culture. Do you know what? He didn't the like it. The thing is that I spoke to Graham soon as Kenny Douglas and Charlie Nicholas. Uh-huh. Where's George like? The three of them says no. No, the three of them says no. You couldn't. But how did he not see that? Uh, well, all I'm saying to you is that uh, what Sean threw for him was yeah. George and Frank, no, but not talent. I he's, never. He's I never I, gone against his type. I think everyone in football. You can play everyone, so much. everyone in football knows. The punters think I've been out every night. No, it's every night life and, and But the, everyone in football knows I never knew after you, a Wednesday. Not a chance. You can't live no, like that. I, I couldn't no. play the way I did. If I'd been out and done, I wish I was half as good as what everyone says I was. <laughs> God, you know, it was, uh, but it was, it was a good, I enjoyed my life. You know, I did. But I just, it was more because of what Celtic had done to me that I wanted to go back to West Ham because John said to me, he says, look, we're getting relegated, not even you. It'll be a miracle if you if stop it. He says, but I want you to be ready and the fans will be, we'll get back. And I says, yeah. And then they, they sat John after it and I thought, I, I, I don't know if I'd have went back if John was there. Mm. You know, especially because he got Lou McCarry. I know a lot of West Ham fans who've never got oh, over John being sacked. No, no. Well, it was, it was done wrong. He should have moved upstairs and Bonzo should have took it. That was the way it should have moved. Everyone in football knew that. And Bonzo would have done that with John, John there. And then you, you, your typical Alvin could have moved in and, and it kept it indoors. But it didn't. They decided to go for Lou McCarry, who was the worst. Great lad, no, but he's never, he was never there. He's, he was always at the racing. You know, and he liked the racing. He likes a punt. Likes a punt, man. No, no, wrong with that, but he was never at training. I, if anyway, we, he done hit Celtic as well. If, <laughs> we were, Celtic. if we were, if we were to suggest that you've got a life outside this podcast, because you want to be very generous, yeah. right? You've probably got a life tonight, yes. but yeah. at work tonight. Why don't we then close being generous to Lou and say, if, if maybe he didn't train you well and he liked to mm-hmm. maybe occasionally look, yeah. at, look at a horse? Yeah. How was he with hypnotists? How <laughs> do you know that? How <laughs> do you know that? It was, it was at, I can't remember the name, Henlow Grange, I think it was called. Henlow Grange. It was in, just outside Bedfordshire, Luton, West Ham. <laughs> he took his, he says we were overweight, and he took it, some of the boys, me, Dixie, not. Well, listen, as not, far as Julian's not, concerned, not, he maybe wasn't my way was to the market. Dixie? Oh, it was not. He was, I can't remember, it may not have been me, Ian Bishop. It was slow, but Trevor Morley, started. George Paris, Parksy. Uh, was it? I can't remember. It may have been Dixie. Anyway, we went to this. We went there and Lou was getting all that. We'll have bets that you can lose the most weight and all that in four days. It's a kind of health farm, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a, it's a health farm. But every night there's something on, there's a magician, a comedian and all that. Just for the old, it's all for the old people. And the, the boy that owned the place was, he's well known about London, he's a good lad. I can't remember his name now, but I knew a couple of girls from Brown's, the nightclub in London. I said, oh, hi, Frank. I said, I didn't, we had just were coming, didn't know you were coming with them and all that. And I'm saying, oh, there's only like half a dozen of us. One of them says, look, we're having a party. This was, it was either that night or the night after, down the local bar, and we've got a lock-in. One of the girls' parties. And it's our birthday. And I says, oh, brilliant. I says, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'm there. As it happens, so is law. But I'll go, we can't go, because my carry won't let us. There was a hypnotist on. Now, I spoke to the guy when he came in, and I'm saying, look, we want you to get our manager out. And he's going, yeah, no problem. I says, he's, he's, he's wanting to quite smoke. Lou's never smoked his life. <laughs> and I gave the guy £100. I gave the guy £100. To hypnotise the West Ham manager. To get him down. So we were, we were all going, yeah, you're... Because he kept saying it's full of crap and all that. And, well, I swear, it. The boy, because I'd wound the guy up that much. Lou's bum had just hit the seat. <laughs> And he'd, he'd done something, and I was, honestly, we were all giving it all that in front of Lou, he was out, he's, he's gone, he's gone. Too. And we all bolted, we all, we all ran, <laughs> <laughs> we all went to a party, <laughs> we, went, we went to his party, and of course I would love to have been there when he woke up and nobody said, <laughs> back in the room, all the old, all the old deals and all that, so I'm going, yeah. <laughs> so we all shot off, I says, give us ten minutes, and the guy went, no, I can't do that, he says, I said, well, give us a couple minutes, we'll get the car park, and we'll shot off, it was brilliant. <laughs> And then so I, what did you and tell him? We, we were in the gym, back. boss. No, we came back at fallen. Well, we didn't get back to about, I don't know, six, seven o'clock in the morning. So it was good. And we thought, we're on that. <laughs> and we had, a, we had a class about nine, my first class, aerobics class was on. And we were like, oh, God, I'll never make it. And the carrier <laughs> gets up. We went in and the girl says, oh, your manager's left. So what happened? Oh, he's been called away with West Ham. So Patsy made a phone call and he got sacked that morning. 
So we all went back to bed and just, <laughs> <laughs> what is all that was? And it was precious, how's your so, luck? Uh, how's your luck? So we, we all got up at lunchtime and drove back into London, it was great. Ah, uh, listen. So for, it was good fun. For a man, <laughs> I, sat, I sat in a different place with guys coming to Eta, but I went to Spain, Valencia player, who yeah. said to me that he was told when he got to Valencia, you'll never make a football player. <laughs> and he practised and he worked and he did. Yeah. Happy yeah. man. You, you, you're well, still think, kicking a ball listen, now. I think I'm still playing football, but you know what? You don't... There's a lot of things that you do and people don't see. You train, you get, you come in late, you come in and you stay a wee bit behind and working. All the best players train hard. Mm. I never ever shipped it. I was I didn't like training, but I done it. When it came to a ball, I would run anywhere. You know, I was well known to be. Uh, what does it say? I would chase an empty crisp pack in a windy day. <laughs> I would chase anything um, just because I loved the game. Football's beautiful, isn't it? It's yeah, lovely. It's, it's a great game. I love it. I just wish more professional teams would play it. <laughs> I think that's a note. <laughs> I think that's a note. Frank McAvenny, just a joy to meet you. Thank you very much. Fine man. It's an absolute pleasure. Fun man, great footballer. And people writing, I want to tell you, I want to share mm. something. People writing about the beginning of you and say, they say amazing things like, mm. you make life better. This Listening to this yeah, makes life yeah. better, or you make me happier, or that's how it's. Somebody once said it's, it's like listening to an autobiography. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People all over the world will be going, I love that man. Yeah. I feel the same about football. It's a rare gift to be able to play it and talk it. Thank Thank you you. very much. So the boys of 86. It's a decent story and we're 30 years on now. West Ham aren't going to win the league this season, but they're having one of their best under Slavin Bilic since Frank and Tony Cotty and John Lyle. Thanks to Frank for his effort. Thanks to you for being there. Thanks to Russell Brand, Mad Irons fan, for sending in his questions. But remember, when I said there was 2 million of you that have now listened, at least 2 million of you that have now listened to this, there was a point when we weren't going to be able to continue. But as you know already, you dug into your pockets, Kickstarter worked, and there's some special people. Chris Stewart's one, so Kieran Galt, and so's Daniel Bourbeau. Chris and Kieran and Daniel were some of those who said, I'll spend a little bit extra to keep the big interview going, and we'll get a shout out in the podcast. Well, Chris, Kieran and Daniel, there might not be two million listening to this episode, but listen, many, many, many thousands of people know that you're our pals, that you supported us. Boys, thanks for being there. The Big Interview is produced by Backpage and me, Graham Hunter. Join our mailing list at grahamhunter.tv to get news and your chance to have questions on the podcast. We'll do it. Sign up at grahamhunter.tv. It's free and we'll give you all the top information and blog content whenever we have it. The show is edited, as always, by Alex Aidy at Audioboom. Our theme music is by the mighty Beer Jacket. I've been enjoying the fiestas. As I record this, the one in Dublin is about to happen. I think it's going to be wild. This episode was recorded at the beautiful, genuinely lovely Hotel Duvan in Glasgow's leafy West End. If you like us, If you enjoy the big interview, rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. But keep listening, keep suggesting things, and keep loving football. It's the greatest invention in the history of the world. Love and kisses.